Hey guys, welcome back. Nike Max 5 vs Prime SB2. We're going head to head, round two. I'm gonna say my final decision has been made on which shoe I prefer more. I've done three races in the Max 5 this season. I've done two races in the Prime SP2. And at the end of this video, you'll know which one is my favorite and my reasons why. Now, I had a lot of hype around the Prime SP2, and I'm gonna start with the advantages and disadvantages of this shoe. So things that I like. It's got a nice bit of foam, better than that, uh, that original version. The colorway, it's okay. Apparently there's some new colorways coming out. I think I'll be a bit more excited to see that one. What I do like about the shoe is that it's an inner sock, which feels a lot more comfortable. You can really feel like you lock your foot down. The synthetic upper is nice. The shoe itself is fairly comfortable. And um, like I said, you get a nice, you get a pretty nice feedback off the track. Now, the disadvantages are after doing a couple of races in them. Um, I'm almost certain that my plantaris issue, if you're up to date on my Instagram and TikTok, um, you'll see that uh, I had a bit of an issue flare up with my lower, with the plantaris tendon. It only really flared up badly after I started wearing these. Mm, coincidence, maybe, I'm not sure, but I think the less foam on the heel, and this is a very aggressive shoe, even though it doesn't look like it, the spike plate on this is really aggressive and it's on a bit of an angle, so it's not straight. So when you feel like you're up on your toes, you actually feel like you're like this. Um, and it's not until you actually wear the shoe that you realize, whereas the Max Fly, when you're up on your toe, it feels much more square. So the two couple of disadvantages around this shoe is that the aggressiveness on the spike plate, I think you need to be a very, very, very strong athlete to wear this. The angle of the spike plate I don't love as much, and and as I said, slightly less foam or you know the aggressiveness of the plate, one or both, has probably contributed to my plantaris issue. Since when, since going back to this Max Fly, it hasn't really flared up too much. And after doing a few races, doing a bit more training in, is actually the spike plate. It's glossy and it's slippery. I know a lot of athletes who've slipped out of blocks or down of blocks who have had to change their setup because ideally in a block start, you put pressure on the midfoot on the block. So when you actually take off, if you've got it on your toes, you get a calf pump and there's a delay where if you've got the mid pressure on the midfoot, you bang, you push and you come away straight away. So I think uh, what I don't like at all is like people have tried sanding the bottom of it, putting tape on the block, still doesn't do as well because it's such an aggressive plate down here and it's glossy here. These are no good for block starts, um, which is a bit of a shame really. I think uh, Adidas has got a bit more to go with this shoe. It's definitely an improvement. I like it, I like it you know, in terms of a progression from the, the original Adidas Prime SP, but my heart, my success, the Nike Max Flight. Like I said to you, I've done two races in the SP2s. 11.49, 11.51. Probably wasn't, you know, like very solid runs, like great runs for me. Done three races in these, 11.36 and 11.57. Um, the 11.57 uh, was down in Canberra. I came off COVID and didn't race for, for and didn't race, train for a week and then um, they've sort of suffered with my asthma and then I ran 11.78 which was yesterday the day after Canberra so you know like I'm not going to directly compare the times but you know if I compare my two best times 11.36 at Illawong 11.51 at Illawong which is a fast track I'm going to say that these are the better shoes and um, you know a couple of the disadvantages that I've spoken about already in the Nike Max Flyers of the bubble they're pops although there's a correlation that I've seen, anecdotal evidence, um, and you know, still probably a, a bit more subjective on my part, is that the people who are more likely to pop these shoes that I've noticed are people with um, not great sprinting technique. Now, like, don't by by all by all means, don't let uh, don't think that that's not that someone's running fast. I just mean in terms of the way they run. People more like jumpers or come from a jumping background or a team sport background, 
and they block more, you know, they get a bit of a uh, bit more ground contact and really rip under and, and block and strike the ground in this way, seems to pop the bubble more. Whereas people who strike down and back sort of get a bit more front side and hit down and back. I'll insert some videos if I can find some good examples um, who are hitting that way and strike the ground in that way. They don't seem to pop the bubble as much, which is interesting. Um, Obviously shows, you know, like probably ideally the, the better your technique or maybe the way the bubble's like, uh, you know, made, it's probably meant to strike down and back in that way. Because yeah, anyone that's had good sprint technique or like, you know, striked down and back, you know, I don't have great sprint technique, but I strike down and back when I run. I haven't popped a bubble on these yet, and fingers crossed. And I've had four pairs. Um, probably the only disadvantage of this bike compared to this one is the tongue. It's separate and if you don't wear shoe, if you don't wear socks like I do, like sometimes the tongue can get curled over and feel pretty tight on your foot. Um, you know, when it's right, you can really lock your foot down, but this one you can lock your foot down a bit more. But the way this upper is, um, I feel like you can have it a bit tighter. Um, and an advantage for me is like I said, with that, since coming back into these spikes, with the plantaris issue, there's a bit more foam on this heel and the spike plate isn't quite as aggressive and it's a bit more square. That versus that, when you're up on your toe, um, has meant that my spike, like my plantaris hasn't really flared up as much since going back into these spikes. Um, so, there we have it. The final battle. Until these either change technology or, you know, maybe I get a bit stronger or faster or they change the bottom of this spike plate, the Nike Max Fly is the spike to get. This is the spike to get, this is the spike to run fast in, this is the spike to have good technique in. And if you run quick, these will help you. Um, so I think, yeah, the final battle, the Nike Max Fly wins out for those reasons that I've just spoken about. And uh, yeah, good luck, let me know what you think. If you disagree, agree, whatever, I don't care. These are my opinions. But as I said, Nike Max Fly is the winner.